I don't know about all of you, but I take great comfort in Luke 21, verse 18. No one? Okay, it's time for you to go and look at your reading and read what Luke 21, 18 says. Not one of your hairs on your head will perish. I take great comfort in that verse. It's actually the only verse out of this lesson that I really wanted to preach on this week. And I have to be honest this morning. This is going to be tough for me. And it's probably going to be tough for you. But you know what? It's been a hard week. It's been a really hard week for me. Because I thought after this and I'm going to say the word, election, everything would be over and done with. But it seems like we just don't understand what it means to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We just don't get it. And that's what this verse is really all about. We read this verse and we think, oh my God, it's talking about the end of time. Right? This, this, is, this, means, this means yes, this means no. This is about the end of time, right? That's what we originally, when we read these verses, when we, we look at what Luke is saying here, and Matthew has the same things, it's all about what's going to come, right? But tell me, if you can, when was there a time that a nation was not rising against nation? And when was there a time that kingdoms were not rising against kingdoms? And when was there a time that there weren't great earthquakes and there weren't great plagues and there weren't great famines? When? When? <laughs> Is that a day or two? <laughs> a couple days in history, maybe. Here's the other thing you've got to think about. When this passage of Scripture was written, right? It wasn't written when Jesus was alive, number one. It was probably written about 70 or 80 A.D. So we're talking 40 to 50 years after Jesus died. And who knows what happened in 72 A.D.? Kurt? <laughs> The destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And what happened just a few years before that? I think it was just a few years before that. This volcano somewhere close. Vesuvius erupted not long before that. So, and nation rising against nation. Rome is going against Israel. It's all about what's happening in that day and time. It's all about what's happening in this day and time. It's all about what's going to happen 200 years from now. It's all about what happened 200 years ago. This isn't about what's going to come. And it's not giving us any clear picture of what's going to happen when Jesus returns. It's talking about right here, right now. And what are we going to do about it? This past couple days I've spent with our senior high youth in Manitowoc with a speaker I had no clue who he was. His name is Grant Norsworthy. Anyone? You've probably never heard of him. You might have heard of the Paul Coleman Trio. And anyone? No one. Wow. How about Sonic Flood? Okay, so you actually have no clue who this man is. He's actually a musician who came from Australia back in the, I think, 90s, mid-90s, late 90s, with uh, the Paul Coleman Trio, who is actually a Christian band who mainstreamed into um, our music scene here in America in the, in the late 90s. Um, and then he joined a band, a, a worship band called Sonic Flood. But he's a bass player, he's a musician. But he came to speak to these kids about what it means to follow God. And he had some points for them. He had three points for them. And I think they fit very nicely with what our text talks about today. Right? About bad things happening to us. And how we survive through time. 
and how we live out our calling as Christians to do this kind of thing week in and week out. Okay? He had three points. And being from Australia, he started this way. Now, remember, I was with senior high kids. No, really? Are you guys awake this morning? (laughs) He started like this. So they gave him a hard time because he said the first number one point that you need to remember. And then and then later on in the session, he came back and he said, well, I got in trouble. I was told that I was supposed to use this finger first. And after he got done with that session, I went up to him and I said, Grant, you need to switch back to this way. And he looked at me kind of funny and he said, why? And I said, on your hand. Which finger is the weakest finger? Which finger is the weakest finger? This one right here. And do you know what his number one point was? His number one point was, the three things I want you to know are, God loves you. And because God loves me, I'm going to love him And because of that, I'm going to do what he leads me to do. Now, why did I go back to Grant and tell him that he needed to keep this as God loves me? It's the weakest thing, right? It's the hardest thing for us to remember. Because everything that I've done wrong and everything that I've done in my past and everything that I've thought and everything that I've... You know, I'm a sinner, right? And everything that I've done can lead to one thing, and that is that God doesn't love me. But if we can understand that God loves us where we're at right here, right now, then that is truly going to lead us to the fact that we love God because he first loved us. You see, this scripture passage isn't about us getting things right and understanding when Jesus is going to come back. Because he's going to come back like a thief in the night. And Jesus himself said to his disciples that no one knows the time that this is going to happen except for the Father. Not even me, not even the Spirit. We don't know what the total plan is. Only the Father knows. So the only things that we can do in our lives that are going to make any sense is know that God loves us and love Him because He first loved us. And then because of that, follow where He's leading us to go and do the things that He's calling us to do. That's it. Because if we can do that, then we've got it all figured out. And all of this stuff that's going to continue to happen, it's going to happen. Because we're not going to stop wars. We're not going to stop earthquakes. We're not going to stop famines. We're not going to stop plagues. We're going to survive. And it's not going to be a walk in the park. Right? This verse is telling us that life's going to be hard. And people are going to not like you because you follow me. But I'm always with you. How many of you know the song? And I know I'm going to get people that know this one. I'm going to tell you the person that composed it, though, first. By Leonard Cohen. How many of you know the fourth verse to Hallelujah, though? And how many of you know why the song was written? Right? You all, any of you that have children who have seen the movie Shrek know the, the song Hallelujah because it was on the Shrek 2 soundtrack. The song Hallelujah is actually a song that we should sing in church because it was written about Bible heroes. I, I kind of lied to Bill in my office this morning. It's not just about David. It's about David and um, there's a reference to some... To, um, Who's the hair guy? Samson. Samson. There's a reference to Samson in it, too. Thank you. See, I don't know the hair guys because that's just not my thing. So, Unless you can see a picture from me from the 80s or 90s, and we're just not even going to go there. We're not even going to go there. The fourth verse is probably really about David. 
right? Because all of us are broken and all of us are sinful and all of us have done wrong things. And the song Hallelujah is about how we stand before God and all that we have to do is sing our broken praise to God. Because that's all God really wants. For us to stand there naked in front of Him saying, I'm broken and I'm nothing without you. And all I can do is say, praise be to you. And the fourth verse is, I did my best. It wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth. I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. Because all God wants us to do is to go on with life. And I know nobody here has thought this, but as I was listening to Grant speak his second time to the senior high kids is, you know, thinking through all the garbage that I saw on Facebook all week long is, if anybody thinks that Hillary Clinton was going to be the savior of the world, you're stupid. If anybody thinks Donald Trump is going to be the savior of the world, you're stupid. There's only one person that can fill that role, and he died on a cross for you 2,000 years ago. So it doesn't matter what's going to happen in this world. Pestilence is going to come. Wars are going to come. All of these bad things are going to happen. But if we can cling to the fact that God loves us, it's not going to matter. Bad things are going to happen, and you're not going to stop that. But if you know that God loves you and you're willing to stand before him broken and just give him praise. That's all he wants. and It's all he's asking us to do. So go and be like Martin Luther. Right. This is the year of the 500th century. We have to talk about Martin Luther. Go and be like Martin Luther, who was said to have written. But it's nowhere to be found in any of his writings. That if I knew the end of the world was coming tomorrow, I would plant a tree today. Who cares if the world's going to end tomorrow? We still have things to do today. We still have people to tell that God loves them. We still have people to help them understand the love of God. We still have people to show them the grace and mercy that God has given to each and every one of us. So go out and plant a tree. And go out and be who God has called you to be. A conduit for His love. Pouring it out into the world. Because that's what's going to make a difference. If we can be disciples of Christ, then we can change the world. And that's the only person that's going to save anybody. So go and plant a tree and show everybody how much God loves them.